Hi, my name is Jacob Leroux, aka Portra Poppy, and this is how I take my base gelatin scan to my final end image. So with scans, you know, scanning is incredibly important. We still need to capture the image correctly and expose it, but handing it off to a film lab is such an important step of the process. I've tried film labs across the U.S. with a varying level of quality, and I find gelatin to be the best place for me to get you know, the furthest I can with a lot of my images. With editing, we are trying to get the best emulation of what the film stock is, but it does take a bit of tuning in that contrast and color to, you know, replicate that fully. In the editing process, you know, a lot of people jump into the basic uh, sliders and, you know, we are dealing with TIFF images, high res scan files, but even with JPEGs, we don't want to just go over and hyper contrast and saturate a lot of our film at the start. The temperature and tint sliders are great, but we can actually do a lot of the heavy lifting with the tone curve. So we don't have to stretch all of that data in the beginning and then end up recorrecting it as we tune in our scan. So I will do my initial contrast adjustment till I feel like the photo is something closer to the end product I'll like. We're adjusting the brightnesses, making sure we're stretching out our histogram data. And we're going in and identifying that tint color that a lot of times, you know, balancing the temperature and tint is a major part of the editing process and leaving it up to, you know, a random scan is is not really the control we want. So zooming in, I can see we do have a good bit of green in our shadows, which we want in Portra. You know, this image was shot on Portra 400 on the Leica M6, but that's a little bit too much green to be realistic. So we're gonna go in to our shadows here. We're just gonna neutralize that color. So once we find a middle ground point, we can see the image, you know, gets a little bit warmer, a little bit more magenta in the shadows and just kind of tunes in the overall feel of this image. So once we're down there, we'll go into our blue channel, AKA our temperature slider, you know, and start pulling a little bit of that warmth to the midtones, adjusting so we're not pulling away from all of our blues in the sky and just getting all of those micro points you know, tuned into why we like it. Um, a big thing is when you are editing, it's a little easier to go extreme with your, you know, sensitivity and then tune it in so you can neutralize a lot of those colors. So if I'm wanting to add some more of the shadows and I find that to be way too much, I'm actually going to slide this back until we get into a bit of a more neutral state to our image. You know, something like that is feeling good. I'm going to have a little bit more blues in our highlights. And we can see our before and after already, you know, with one section of the editing process is, you know, massively further away from where we started. Um, I zoom in a lot to the contrast uh, just to make sure. I think contrast is, is the base point of our style. You know, even if you're on the larger and doing this back in the day, contrast and crop is something you can always edit. So after we made those first major adjustments, we're gonna go into the basic chart where I'm gonna quickly just move around, expand a little bit of data, get closer to our end product. And then I'm finally coming to our contrast slider, which is going to affect the saturation as well. And I'm just bumping that up so we get closer to where we want. Now, a little checker we can see is we have a great cafe sign looking vintage, some retro feeling, but we're seeing that, you know, our histogram is not showing that complete stretch of data to the highlights. So I'm more or less zooming in. So I'm not blowing any of the highlights here. And I'm still making sure our image is bright enough. Sometimes with film, we get this flat look, we edit it how we want it. And then we realize after the export that the image is way darker than we originally intended to be. So just looking at our histogram, seeing that our data is stretched over this complete area, it's just gonna double check it. So we're not exporting an image that looks generally fine for color here, but realizing that we are way, way darker than we originally intended for this image. Once we have the basic tone curve and adjustments edited, I can always go in and fix any little issues with the color grading by selecting maybe just the highlights, making sure we still have our nice blue sky, um, or going in if it felt like it wasn't warm enough and putting some warmth in the mid-tones and contrast. Now, this is the same tool we're using as the tone curve, but since we've already corrected our image, now we're moving into emphasizing, you know, 
the the colors of Portra and not stepping on our toes by going back and continuously changing what we're doing in our progress. Right now we're feeling generally pretty good. We're far along the way into the edit and we're getting way more of a realistic scan or image out of this. Uh, oh, loving it so far. If I did have any major issues, I could come to the color mixer, go to the hue, into the eyedropper, and maybe just select a tonal quality to kind of adjust by dragging my mouse up and down along that chart. So we had a little bit too much tinge of red in our base color, which we might get reflecting all of these red accents. So I'm just going into a little bit of our yellows and pushing that up to green since we've already neutralized that with the tone curve. Now we're pretty close to our end edit. We're making sure everything's good. Maybe the final touch on a lot of my photos will be through the vibrance and not the saturation slider because we want to affect not just the full image globally, but more of the subtle hues coming out in the red and if not blue contrast of the sky. But that is an edit, a quicker edit start to finish. You can see I have not touch the temperature and tint sliders yet, but I've fully, you know, tuned in this image with alternate tools that work a little bit better for the gelatin style TIFFs. So I'm excited to see what everyone else edits. This is a couple little things I do with pretty much every photo I produce. And now with this consistency, it's really helped me to find what palettes I love, what my style is going to be. And now I can kind of get a pre-visualization when I shoot my images, knowing it will get to an end product that I love. Back in the day, I've used so many labs that give me cold or overly warm or hyper contrast scans that you really can't do a lot with. And we want to take you know, those decision-making items out of the hands of just a scanner and put that into ours, the photographer. So thank you so much. Uh, check out the article below. I talked about how film can help photographers from any walk of life. You know, if you're a digital photographer and you just want to get better at some of your editing habits, picking up some film photos can really help that tune in. We get less variety or less availability to make mistakes and more refined on the individual shots we take and the exposures that we meter them for. So thank you so much and excited to see what you guys edit at home.